Ohio State and Michigan own the Big Ten, right? Well, that was certainly the case during the 10-year war of Bo Schembechler versus Woody Hayes, Michigan, Ohio State, Ohio State, Michigan, owning the Big Ten from 1969 through 1978, going to 13 consecutive Rose Bowls as the conference champion. But, of course, the conference existed before 1969 and has since and there have been many prominent programs included with longstanding members like Iowa, Wisconsin, and others. And, of course, Nebraska and Penn State in recent years. We check out the Big Ten next right here at the Voice of College Football. Best discussion, debate, and analysis because of your support. So please like the video, share these videos out on social media, and subscribe right here at the Voice of College Football as we break down all-time program rankings. Check out the initial video in which we run down our 10 criteria. It's not a flawless system for many reasons that I've cited because of me. Mainly, programs switching conferences has made it difficult to evaluate certain aspects of this, but with 10 criteria, this is pretty darn close to an exhaustive system and the best you will find out there. Let's look at the Big Ten and first size up the oldest standing athletic conference in the history of intercollegiate sports. It's the Big Ten Conference. First, the Western Conference formed in 1896, then the Big Nine and then officially the Big Ten with Michigan State entering in 1950. And, of course, we've got 14 schools in the Big Ten, so a lot of Big Ten detractors and critics say it's not the Big Ten, it's the Big 14. Well, it's a brand name at this point. First, we go to winning percentage. But before we do that, let's check out when and how the Big Ten was formed. Let's again go back to 1896 and see that Eight of the members that currently exist in the Big Ten were members initially right out of the gate before 1900. Michigan, Northwestern, Purdue, Wisconsin, Illinois, Indiana, Iowa, and Minnesota, all Big Ten members before 1900. Then in 1912, Ohio State joined. And then it was the Big Nine all the way until 1950, Michigan State joined. And then many of us... Long-standing college football fans remember the Big Ten as the Big Ten with 10 teams. And then Penn State became a prominent addition for the football season of 1993. And since then, Nebraska 2011, Maryland and Rutgers offering so much to this fine conference from a football standpoint in 2014. All right, let's go to our first criteria, winning percentage. Who do you think is number one? It is the program with the best winning percentage of all time. Very close with Alabama. And Ohio State, of course, owns it here. If we look at all-time wins, Michigan has held that mark basically for the history of college football. Michigan has been the all-time wins leader. Ohio State and Alabama, in particular, are catching up about 35 behind. But Michigan's still the all-time wins leader. But looking at winning percentage, of course, Ohio State started playing football much later than Michigan and therefore have a 732 to 729 winning percentage lead. Penn State and Nebraska, about five percentage points back, around 68% all-time winning percentage. For the traditional Big Ten teams, the other school that ranks over 60% in the winning column would be Michigan State, barely there at 601. Of course, it's always interesting to note how these numbers arrived at this place because, of co course, if you look at certain programs, they got off to historic starts back in the 20s and 30s. And then other ones have had to play catch-up. Look at a program like Wisconsin. Certainly they had a rich history going back to the 30s and 40s, but a long drought throughout the 60s, 70s, and 80s. Then Barry Alvarez resurrected the program in Wisconsin is doing a lot of catching up here in the last 30 years in regards to all these numbers. Contrast that to a program like Minnesota that won a ton of Big Ten championships that we will see in just a second in the 40s, 50s, and 60s, last winning a Big Ten championship in 1967. So when you add it all up, you get the numbers that we're going to present. But of course, keep in mind, different eras and different programs have emerged or faltered at different times, and when you add it all up, you've got a kind of middle tier of the Big Ten that we will see here when we add it all up. Then we go to rankings. So the AP rankings gain all sorts of criticism from me from week to week. Yes, 
That is true that the AP rankings many times don't make sense. But when you add it all up over the course of history, it's a strong indicator. A team does not finish number eight in the country in a particular season because they're no good. So there are issues that I have with the AP rankings, but by and large, over the course of history, there is a strong indication of the strength of programs. And once again, you'll see the reflection here. Ohio State is arguably the top pollster in the history of college football. Oklahoma's right there. Alabama as well. Michigan at number two in the Big Ten. The number I wanted to see next was Nebraska or Penn State. Who would be number three in the conference? Well, it's Nebraska with a sizable lead, and that's considering that the Huskers have been non-existent from the poll since 2014. And also that Nebraska has not been highly regarded in the AP poll since the early 2000s. So about a 20-year drought of Nebraska being prominent, impactful in the AP rankings, but they're still third best in the Big Ten. But, of course, uh, 90-some percent of that poll points coming from their time in the Big 8 and the Big 12. Of course, Penn State factors in uh, significantly as well. Again, Wisconsin has been on a tremendous 30-year run since the early 90s to try to play catch-up. Indiana was ranked two seasons ago in 2020, their first ranking since 1993. Indiana has basically been non-existent, but nowhere close to Rutgers. Rutgers, even though they played in the very first college football game back in 1869, well, Rutgers with a measly 29 total poll points. All right, let's now move on to bowl games. And if you check out the inaugural video, then you're going to understand how we uh, distributed the points and the weight of each category. And for bowl games, bowl wins, let's understand that major bowl wins should be counted more heavily. And uh, for us, we count them for two points versus just one point for all other bowl victories. Ohio State has the most major bowl victories in the conference, not surprisingly, with 21 Michigan with 11 out of the two teams that have been in the Big Ten over the course of its history. Penn State and Nebraska, of course, had tremendous runs through the 70s, 80s, and 90s and racked up 16 and 14 major bowl wins, respectively, mostly under, for Penn State, Joe Paterno, under Bob Devaney and, of course, Tom Osborne for Nebraska. And then you see a significant drop-off after those big four in major bowl victories. Consider that in the Big Ten that no team played in any other bowl game besides the Rose Bowl until 1975. So you could be the number two team in the country. As was the case with Ohio State and Michigan as they waged war in the late 60s and early 70s. And the loser of that game was often still ranked in the top five in the country but did not play in a bowl game. It wasn't until 1975. So we're talking 79 years into the existence of the conference that uh, teams got to play another bowl game. So the aggregate bowl records and total bowl appearances out of Big Ten teams is subdued by that limitation until 1975 compared to the other major conferences. Ohio State's only won five other bowl games. Most of their bowl games have been major bowl wins. So that has played into the significance of Ohio State's place in college football as they basically do not play in minor bowl games. They've got five other wins that we see right there with 26. But actually, Penn State, and again, we've got to credit Joe Paterno because it's his run from 1966 through 2011 that makes up the majority of Penn State positive college football history on the field. And Penn State has 30 bowl wins total. Penn State's 13-9 and nine in bowl games since joining the Big Ten. Nebraska, despite uh, a downside coming here in the last 15 to 20 years, now 2-4 and four as a Big Ten member, still is third in the conference in bowl victories. We see Michigan uh, with its number of bowl wins at 21-28, and 28, their record. Michigan's only 3-12 and 12 since the 2004 Rose Bowl in which they lost to USC. 3-12 and 12 under Carr, Hoke, Rich Rod, and Harbaugh recently for the Maize and Blue. And Indiana only has three bowl wins 
all minor bowl wins for the Hoosiers. The last time Indiana played in a major bowl game was in the 1967 Rose Bowl. Conference championships, Michigan, despite a downturn here since 2004, of course, they just won a Big Ten championship title, defeating Ohio State and Iowa, the final two games of the season, for the first time in 17 years, still owns the most Big Ten championships. We would have to go back prior to Ohio State's entry into the Big Ten in 1912 to see how many Ohio State, or I'm sorry, Michigan won before Ohio State entered the conference to see if this is a fair comparison for Ohio State. Probably not. Michigan 43, Ohio State 40. Again, the Buckeyes most likely have more conference championships since entering the Big Ten. There we see Nebraska with 46 conference championships, but all of those came in the Big 8 and the Big 12. Penn State suffers in this category from being an independent Yes, it could be considered a flaw of this system, but it's not factored into the points that heavily. If you take it all into consideration, Nebraska and Penn State are going to have quite the battle as we run through the point totals and take you to the end conclusion here. Minnesota with a strong run, as we mentioned earlier, in the 40s, 50s, and 60s, had won 18 conference championships. Now on to national championships, and again, Watch the inaugural video. You will better understand where we place the national championships. I just don't take them verbatim based on what the AP had to say because the AP is seriously flawed when it comes to awarding national championships. And I certainly don't go by the school's claims for national championships. I went through each season going back 100 years because the initial national championships going back to the first college football game of 1869 we went 20 years of college football with like four teams and none of those four squads are significant or relevant now. So really the last 100 years of college football, did I go through the national championships and I have redistributed national championships to a certain extent. Mostly I've added to national championships because typically a team had to be awarded a national championship by one of the major polls. And we went by the AP rankings first and foremost and that's only one team, and typically there were three or four teams that earned a share of a national championship. So the way it shakes out is Ohio State with nine national championships, Michigan and Minnesota with six, Nebraska and Penn State again during that amazing run that both of those schools had in the 70s, 80s, and 90s, finish with five Penn State's last national championship. No, it's not official, but according to the voice of college football, Penn State's last national championship a split with Nebraska in 1994. Michigan last won a Big Ten championship for anybody not named Ohio State in 1997. NFL draft selections, Ohio State's on top by a wide margin. USC's number one all time. And of course, when we get to the conclusion of this series and go through all the conferences, we will rank nationally all the teams and programs. And Ohio State, of course, is going to be significant in that ranking and possibly number one. They're number one in the Big Ten by a wide margin of NFL draft selections. There you see Michigan with a decent lead over uh, Penn State and Nebraska. And then, wow, Michigan State, Iowa, Wisconsin, Purdue, Minnesota, all in that 250 to 315 range. They've all had really good runs of sending players to the pros. And, of course, at different times in their history, Rutgers, by far, the lowest um, NFL total of players drafted with 63. Now on to first round draft selections, and this is where Ohio State completely dominates. And this is pretty significant, and this speaks a lot. When you consider the stature of Michigan football, Nebraska, especially since the 60s, Penn State, especially since the 60s, the Penn State, Nebraska, for a good chunk of history, were as good as anybody in the nation And Ohio State has this kind of lead in NFL draft selections, more than two to one over everybody. There you see the list right there and how that shakes out over the course of history. And of course, the last 30 years or so have been good to the Buckeyes as well. All Americans, Michigan uh, pushing Ohio State in this category at 90 to 85. We also see Nebraska and Penn State figure in 
significantly. Check out how consistent these numbers are. And I don't know if you've seen the other conference videos that we posted, the Pac-12, the Big 12, and the ACC. Please check them out. But there is a consistent thread through all these numbers. Rarely do you see a team rank number one in one category and number seven in another category. You're either at the top echelon, and that remains consistent through all these measurements, or you're in the middle tier, or you're near the bottom. And it pretty much runs right through from start to finish. So that justifies the criteria as well. So in all Americans, once again, Ohio State with a slim lead over Michigan, Nebraska, and Penn State right there, as has been the trend. Heisman Trophy winners, Ohio State tied with Oklahoma and USC with the most all-time, and Notre Dame as well. We've got four schools now with seven Heisman Trophy winners. The most of any other school in the Big Ten would, of course, be uh, Michigan and Nebraska with three each. Charles Woodson, the last with the Maize and Blue in 1997 era, Crouch, Nebraska, 2001. And finally, award winners. So again, go to the initial video. I run down the major award winners. I represented every position on the football field. And the point totals there go to Ohio State, 29. But Nebraska's right there at 23. And it's pretty significant, once again, to consider that over the history of the awarding of these individual position awards that Ohio State is more than two to one over Michigan and Penn State. And even though all these three schools at the bottom have played football for a long, long time, Illinois, Indiana, and Rutgers, those three schools in the Big Ten still have yet to win a major position award, even though ironically for Illinois, one of the awards is named after one of their great players of all time, Dick Budkiss, the Budkiss Award. All right, it all shakes out like this. Not surprisingly, Ohio State's number one. It would be interesting to shave off the last 15 years and see how these point totals would rack up at that point. Michigan would probably be number one circa 2005, but the Buckeyes have been dominant in this conference over the past 15 to 16 years. One of the statistics that I like to cite that really outlines Ohio State's dominance in this conference. Take out the Luke Fickle interim coach year of 2011. Ohio State's worst record in the Big Ten since 2004. Worst record in the Big Ten, 7-1. and one. So Michigan comes in at number two, of course, bolstered by a real jump start out of the gate. So Michigan, if we would measure this and I would love to do this at some point. I would like to do a maybe post-World War II and also maybe a post-1970, last 50 years plus of college football, and then maybe a 21st century, 2000 and on, the last 22 seasons of college football. Uh, Penn State and Nebraska, of course, had a tremendous run, as we've noted, in the 60s, 70s, and 80s into the 90s for those two schools. And so they rank at three and four. Then there's a considerable drop-off, but I'm a bit surprised that Michigan State is next in line there. Michigan State, extremely strong in the 50s and 60s, played basically marginal football for most of the 70s, 80s, and 90s. And the early 2000s, Mark Antonio had a nice run, of course, for six or seven years uh, at the beginning of his tenure, but Michigan State football uh, has slid off and been a 55% winning percentage program for the bulk of my lifetime. Wisconsin, of course, in the last 30 years has been tremendous, and they have uh, raised their stock. You see Iowa there along with Minnesota and Purdue, uh, fairly close numbers from all of them, and consistently through the ranks, you see that Indiana and Rutgers do not fare well and Rutgers has historically the worst program despite playing, again, the first college football game in history in 1869. Rutgers is 14th and last in the Big Ten. We enjoy breaking down college football history here at The Voice of College Football. We hope you do as well. If you enjoy these kind of videos, please support by liking the video, sharing the videos out on social media. We need uh, views on these videos, and please subscribe right here and tell others that we are here with the best discussion, debate, and analysis with your support right here at the Voice of College Football. We'll see you next time with the, what is that conference? Oh, the SEC.